Well, hey, YouTube, Petey Two Finger here, and I thought I would do a slideshow, guided slideshow tour of this amplifier here. I built two of these amps. I found two of these boxes. Uh, these chassis were originally something called a coaxial video switch box. Found two of them about two years apart. I think they, one was $3.99, one was $5.99. And basically, I really liked the idea because it was about the same size as a rack mount chassis. A little different. And the fact that it had pre-drilled uh, holes that were about the perfect size for a quarter inch jack. And then it was aluminum, which is really easy to work with. Uh, so you basically unscrew. There's four screws uh, on each side panel. Uh, well, two on each. So there's a total of two, four, six, eight holding this together as we see it now. And then you can see that lip on the back. At the top of that lip, there's a little uh, a slot. Well, that's the telltale slot where there's a piece of sheet metal that when you remove all four screws on one side, let's say the right side, if we were to remove that wood panel, you could slide that sheet metal panel in there in that lip, that in that slot. There's another slot in the front, and that's the roof. So there's a roof and a bottom. I just have it off for the sake of taking the photos. So that was why I wanted to buy it. Basically, this is a uh, it's an amplifier, but you don't think of it as a tube tone, L analog tube tone machine. This is not uh, your father's Marshall. This is just something to power the speaker. We get all of our tone somewhere else okay we don't overdrive this there's no clipping there's no gain control there's no distortion but there is an eq so basically from left to right you see there's a blue 10 millimeter power led uh, and then there's a display with numbers on it. and then there's a toggle well that toggle basically what i'll do is i'll set my gear up and i'll test everything out and once everything's working i shut it down to go do some more work of uh, testing out other people's rigs or I'll have a sandwich. And then when I come back and it's time to play the actual quote-unquote gig, I will shut that toggle switch off so I don't have that glaring blue LED on, just wasting power for the whole gig. This is battery electronics, so things are a little bit different in my head. The next thing is the digital display. That's an automotive thing, and it relates to testing the batteries. We'll get to that later. I paid a dollar for that display, and it runs from 0 to 24 volts. So it's a really neat old little thing. So we have the blue powering LED, the numerical display to test the batteries, the toggle switch to shut off the blue power, main power LED. Then we have three knobs for bass, mid-range, and treble for the EQ, and a switch to bypass them. Then we have a master volume switch. And then we have a pair of switches. There is a momentary contact toggle that you throw down and it springs back up. So it's momentary. And then there is a knob, a uh, toggle knob. And that's a, what do you call it? A rotary switch that has a center position, a right and a left position. Uh, and that is basically, you could look, when you're looking back at the middle three knobs for the EQ, those are two separate circuits, and they each have a 9-volt battery. So to test the power on this thing, because we're running off of batteries, we was, first we would set the, the master rotary switch at the noon position, where we see it is now, and we would hit that toggle switch to the left of it down, and that would tell me my input power. Now the input power is two 12-volt batteries running at 24 volts, or a master lithium-ion bank. So uh, you can see behind the amp on the left there's a black box. That's one of the sealed lead acid batteries. It has a big white sticker on the left side of it. If we had two of those running on it would be about 25 or 26 volts. So as the day goes on they drain a little bit. Let's say we've been playing for 12 hours really cranking it out, powering a lot of speakers. It would be down to say even as low as 21 volts. And we would be that would be able to be reflected by setting that uh, knob on the right to the noon position and then pushing the toggle down. And then on the left, we see the triple readout. It's going to tell me the exact voltage coming in on those batteries. Now, getting back to the EQ circuits, those each, the right channel has a 9 volt, uh, like a Duracell 9 volt battery, and so does the left one. So, how do you check the voltage on those? Well, hmm, I'm glad you asked. You take that knob that, that was set at noon to check the master input power 
click it once to the left and hit the toggle switch down and you're testing the voltage for the left 9 volt battery so it would read uh, say 9.86 and then you would click it over to the right and click it down and because I they're not Duracells I lied I got them from uh, Family Dollar Tree I pushed the button down and it would be 9.86 Working far further to the right, there's another toggle switch and then a big regular size toggle. That big regular size toggle is the power that turns on the main power amp. And then the switch next to it to the left turns on the equalizers. It provides that 18 volts going to uh, the pair of EQ circuits. Here we see the rear of the panel. Uh, from left to right, again, we would have stereo master input on a single quarter inch jack and we would have the master power input on a 5.5 outer diameter 2.1 millimeter inner diameter DC uh, positive polarity style jack with a fuse I typically run a 3 or a 5 amp fuse in, in these units uh, and then I've merely duct taped over some holes I could I, what I should have done is put uh, put some masking tape down on the outside of that and filled that in with some automotive epoxy such as JB Weld, uh, but I didn't. And then we see a pair of output jacks. Those are the speaker jacks. And there's another fuse. I'm guessing that is maybe one power input bypasses the batteries for the EQs. Maybe I had that wired up. Okay, here taking a look overhead at the whole mess. We can see on the, on the left those two square boxes. Those are 9-volt battery boxes for a guitar. So you can open those up on the side, push the little latch and it pops open, and you pop in the 9-volt. And then we can see in the front panel that black box with the white circle, looks like a W circle. That's the meter, the volt meter. And then there's the pair of boxes with the white wires coming out of them. Those are the base EQ harnesses. If you go on eBay, you can get these for 8 or 9 or $10. I think they were $8 when I got them a few years ago. It's a little black plastic box that's been filled with epoxy with wires jutting out of it. And those are, if you have like a crappy base and you want to make it active, quote unquote, you can get this kit and you put a 9 volt in your, in your base. You'd have to route a spot for that. Put one of those battery holders that we see on the left in your base and then find a spot inside the cavity for that circuit to live. And then you can cover it with knobs and have active EQ controls. So it's a little preamp and it's voiced for bass. Not the best for guitar, which is why I replaced uh, these units with what I would call uh, a tone mender. And that's by Runoff Groove. You can check that out. They have Vero layouts for those. So. Uh, just behind that, you can see there's a heat sink that's mounted on the board. That's a 9-volt uh, heat sink. So, yeah, this amp, in case my 9-volt batteries went dead, I could plug a 12-volt battery into it, and it would run 12 volts through that, uh, through the uh, voltage regulator with the heat sink. And the, it's got a pair of cap capacitors, one in the smaller one in the input and a larger one in the output. And then that would run up to what I told you was the bypass switch for the EQ, I'm guessing is a powering switch for the EQ to run it off batteries or rear input jack power, which would be a larger battery. So this is just like really being me being flexible. And then we see the main amp board with the black and red RCA controls, uh, or jacks, excuse me, the main uh, audio inputs. And then you can see the outputs uh, feeding some gold-colored speaker cable in the rear going to the output jacks. So it's pretty neat. I'm using uh, wire is probably recycled from computer power supplies. It's larger gauged wire, except for some of the audio wiring, which you can see it's basically uh, pretty pretty neat. And there is a heat sink on that amp. I'm, gee, I'm looking at that amp. I have no idea. Oh, that's a Sure amp board, so that's a good one. So I'm wondering uh, just exactly if that's a 50 by 2. It must be. I tended to put 50 by 2s in here. Either way, it's always been more than enough power for what we need to do. So we're taking a look at the next photograph. Here we have a close-up of the blue LED and the voltmeter display. 
Uh, again, the next toggle switch shut, just shuts off the power for the blue LED. Then the EQ, and then the power routing switch for the EQ, whether we want to run off internal 9-volt battery or an external jack powering. Here we have a close-up shot of the EQ modules from eBay. You can see how they're just covered with wires coming out of the epoxy. And then what I did basically was wire them together where each pot, each uh, frequency band, bass, mid-range, and treble, like the treble wire would come out and go to a, a single pot. I would unsolder that and get a stereo pot or a dual pot and then take the pair of wires from the right and left channel and wire up that pair to a single stereo pot. So that's how I made that happen. And again, this is not a gainy, all tube tone, Marshall tube machine of tone. It's just something to power the speakers. I get all my gain elsewhere. Oh, well, moving on, we've got another shot which reveals part of the front panel from right to left. You can see the 10 millimeter LED. And then we have the voltmeter and it's kind of awkward chassis which enabled me to mount it a little bit easier. Uh, then there's like an SPDT switch. All of the pot wiring with those dual pots. Another uh, SPDT switch. A stereo, the stereo volume pot with the red and powder blue wire on it. And then there's the goofy wiring with that more complicated than it probably needs to be. You can see that I used some sort of a uh, binding post at one point and a 2.1 mil male for the power going into the main board on the back side next to the row of four capacitors. Colorful wiring going to the 7809 voltage regulator with its tall standing heat sink. All looks pretty legit, doesn't it? I have a pair of these amplifiers. One's wired for uh, the Tone Mender EQ for guitar. Another one has those bass EQs that my wife uses for her playing her bass guitar through that. This is a rotary switch. And you can see how the power switch, uh, there's one, two, three, four switches wired up in line for the powering. So you have the left to right master DPDT toggle with another baby DT. DPDT toggle in red with the rotary switch and then that momentary contact which you can see how cute that little standoff is in there doing nothing. <laughs> it looks like I've extended one that black wire that's going underneath it. That's really cute. What's going on with that? Got a piece of shrink on there? <laughs> it's great when you go back and at least you can laugh at your own work. But uh, yeah, front panel, it is what it is. I, I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this video with me. You can see how I uh, put together some of these amps and how much I love doing this hobby. These, this stuff works really good. I've never had any problems using these Class D amps. Here we see a close-up of the uh, Sure Electronics brand. I wish I had a more information as far as what model that is. I can just tell you it's a 50 by 2. I thought that all the 50 by 2s had active fans on them. But, uh, so I'm not sure when I took this picture. Maybe I upgraded it later. I know that I've done a lot of work on these amps. And I know that I'm right now I'm using different stuff. So uh, I have these and I, I will definitely break. This amp would probably be broken out if we did a full band family jam. And then I would use my Gauss 2148 speakers. Make sure I drown everybody else out. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, that was a guided tour of the Class D rack mount style amplifier. Please uh, like and share if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe. And I love it when you guys leave comments. Especially let me know how wrong I'm doing everything. That really makes me feel good about how big of a noob I am. So take care, you guys, and peace.